<laughs> hey, fix that. In today's video, we are going to learn about Python dictionary comprehension. So dictionary comprehension is such an awesome feature and uh, maybe you know list comprehension, maybe you don't, so I don't assume that you any know anything about this uh, great feature, feature but um, yeah, so dictionary comprehension is used by advanced Python coders to create dictionaries in a, in a very effective, uh, concise and memory efficient uh, one-liner. And uh, so, yeah, so you are you are going to learn how how this actually works. You will see uh, at least five detailed examples. So where I give you a problem first, and then I uh, show you how to solve this problem with dictionary comprehension. And I will I will also like uh, touch different areas in Python that are uh, related to this. And Python dictionaries actually it's one of the uh, most frequently used but still underused. Um, technique, uh, a data structure in Python, in my opinion. Why? Because dictionaries are very efficient to, to access elements. You can access element in constant time, so no matter how large the dictionary is, it's very efficient to get some elements from the dictionary and to add some elements to the dictionaries to check whether an element is already in the dictionary. This is called the membership operation. So dictionary has very unique um, properties that um, are you know, in many cases superior to Python lists, but many people still use Python lists and then they, for example, they search a list for a value or so, which is very inefficient because then you have to iterate over each element in the list. So dictionaries are uh, very powerful, underused, and creating dictionaries is very efficiently, can be very efficiently done with dictionary comprehension. So what is it? What is dictionary comprehension? Um, as I already said, it's a concise and memory efficient way to create and initialize dictionaries in one line of Python code. And it consists of two parts, the expression and the context. Uh, the expression defines how to map keys to values and the context loops over an iterable using a single line for loop cons construct, which you will see in a moment, um, to, and defines which, which key value pairs to include in the new dictionaries. Okay, so um, first of all, maybe yet, let's have an example. So we have some uh, woman. Like maybe, let's copy paste some code. Okay, so we have some man and we have some woman and we want to find a matching between them. So we can create uh, a dictionary like follow as follows. So we have a dictionary called pairs. We use the standard dictionary syntax. So we, we have the opening and closing closing uh, bracket notation. This uh, basically it creates a dictionary. Yeah, and now we define the mapping from woman to man. Okay, so and we have this color notation. We have a mapping from woman to man, and we iterate over all woman and man in. The sit in the result of the zip function from woman to man. Okay, so this this now it's very concise. You see, it consists only of say 20 symbols, and this already creates as a powerful dictionary. Uh, dictionary so mapping from woman to man, and if you pr we print the result, we see the following output: Alice is mapped to Bob, Anne is mapped to Frank, and Liz is mapped to Pete. Okay, and this is a, this is a, like exactly. Uh, um, the mappings here. So we have Bob to uh, basically we map woman to man, Alice to Bob, and to Frank and Liz to Pete. So um, so how does it work? So here uh, in this case we have um, the expression part, which is this part, this first part of the dictionary comprehension, and the expression just tells us for two variables, like or or one variable could be even. So how to map a key to a value. Okay, and we just say, okay, we map the key w, which is just a variable name, to the um, value m. Okay, and we could also do it the other way around. We could also map m to w. Okay, and these are just variable names. And these variable names have to be defined. And they are defined in the context part. And this whole thing that comes after the expression is the context part. And the context part um, defines, it goes, it iterates over an iterable. So it loops over an iterable using the sing line for loop construct here. Um, and uh, um, and yeah, just defines the variables you have used in the expression. And it can be any expression, it can be any variables. But here we define, uh, we like create an iterable um, using the zip function. The zip function just zips together uh, in pairs, these two lists. So we, it pairs together Bob and Alice, Frank and Anne and Pete and Liz. But in the reverse order, like in, it, 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 like the first argument of the zip function is woman, second one is man. So we have, uh, like the first element of the woman list is mapped to the first element of the man list. 
the second element is mapped to the second and the third to the third and uh, these are paired like this so we have the zip function is a is an iterable of pairs of tuples and we just catch these tuples here using this notation uh, so we have uh, this comma notation basically we iterate over all tuple values we name the first tuple values w the second because it's a woman w for woman and the second tuple value m because it's a man and then we simply map man to woman right in this case so this should now reverse the order um, yeah we map now man to woman okay and so you can define an expression you can basically customize the mapping behavior and an expression you can define how to actually um, uh, which elements to map okay which keys and values to map so this was like the, our first example but fear not if you didn't get what, this 100% we will dive into five more examples uh, next and in these examples which we are looking at now we will cover different topics and I will just ex explain them on the on the fly basically. Okay, so our first problem is to create a dictionary using dictionary comprehension from a list of integers. So we want to have a dictionary from a list of integers. We say we have a, um, like a list Maybe let's have a challenge, let's, let's do all of this in a single line of code, okay? So we have the print statement and what do we print? We print the res uh, a dictionary, okay? So we create a dictionary, pass a dictionary into the di uh, uh, print function. Now we create a dictionary using dictionary comprehension and um, dictionary comprehension works like this. So, we, so now we have an expression. Again, using this colon, colon notation, this one is the expression part. Let, let's just write context here. I will replace this in a moment. Um, and our, um, our expression is basically we, we, we have a, a variable i, which will, defined, will be defined in the context. Um, and we map the string value of this variable. This is an, like it will be an integer. So we convert the integer to a string and map the, and use this as a key and map it to the value i. So we map every, every integer First, to, so first we convert an integer to a string and then we map the string to the integer value. Okay, and this, now we need to define the context. Uh, again, we use the single line for loop construct for i in range, say five. And we directly print this to the shell. So the result will be a dictionary. And you see here we have, um, this is our result. We map the string value zero to the integer value zero, the string value one to the integer one, the string two to the integer two and so on, okay? So this is our mapping. This column defines the other mapping and they are comma, comma separated. I assume you already have some knowledge of dictionaries. If not, then just uh, watch my video about um, dictionaries and, my, and see the tutorial about dictionaries. I will also give a link in the video description. Um, okay, so... Um, Let's, so this will be, our, this was our first example. Let's call it x1. Um, let's dive into the second example. What is our second problem? So given a list of fruit names as strings. So I'll show you what is given. So this is given. So we have some fruits like apple, mango, banana, cherry. These are our na um, as names. You, now we use dictionary comprehension to create a dictionary with the list elements as keys and their length as the values. Okay, so this is interesting. So we want to, again, print something. We directly um, pass the dictionary that we dynamically create. Now we need to define, again, I'll write it down for you. So we have an expression and we have a context. We need to define both. This is similar for list comprehension. If you know list comprehension, it also consists of an expression statement and a context statement. And expression just gives us um, the next element to include in the iterable in this case it's a dictionary and dictionary element is a key value pair so we need to define a key value pair here and our key value pair will be so we have a fruit a name fruit name and we want to map it to the length of this fruit name okay so we we use the length the python built-in function len to do this now we simply define we need to define the variable fruit in the context and use the um, for loop for fruit in fruits and we print this to the shell okay if we if we um, look at the result the result is apple our apple name is uh, mapped to the integer five because it consists of five characters mango is mapped to five banana is mapped to six cherry is mapped to six so um, 
we can, but we can also like the context can be even more um, advanced. So this is this is a new feature you you will learn now about the um, dictionary comprehension. You can restrict the focus uh, the the context even more. So now here we iterate over all fruits in our in your fruits variable. But what if you don't want to have all fruits? Maybe you just want to have the fruits that have the letter A in them. Okay? Then you can use the following. You can simply add an if statement if fruit. This is a variable you have defined in your in your um, loop here. So this is our loop variable, and you iterate over all fruit, or, or over each fruit in your fruits iterable. So this is the string now, and now and now we check if a in fruit. So we check if the letter a is in our string fruit, and only then we will include it in our dictionary. Otherwise, we won't. So let's run this. And now, you, now we see that only that this dictionary now contains only three elements and not four elements like before. So before we had four elements. Which element uh, is missing? Cherry, because cherry doesn't contain a letter A. So therefore, we have excluded it from our mapping. Okay, so this this works beautifully. Um, this was our second and say third example. Um, now let's let's dive into example three and. Here our problem is to create a dictionary with dictionary comprehension, uh, using dictionary comprehension that, uh, that uses the list elements as keys and their capitalized variants as values. Okay, so again we assume the fruits very uh, the fruits um, the fruits list. We can just uh, reuse it to create our dictionary. And uh, in this case we just let's first create the dictionary and um, the dictionary. Now we want to map each fruit to the capitalized version of this fruit and we iterate for each fruit in fruits and we can print the dictionary so we could also write this in a single line of code but um, as you know as you may know I am a like Python one liner en enthusiast I have written the book Python one liners check it out it's a uh, it's a concise book, uh, but it, that, I mean, it's an introduction to Python and computer science. It gives you a uh, broad picture in, in, uh, over the field of computer science, machine learning, data science, regular expressions, um, algorithms, and Python basics. And you can start with no pre-knowledge and you will master basically the single line of Python code and you will see the big picture context uh, in computer science and how Python fits into the big space. Uh, it's a good introduction. Uh, so check it out, Python one-liners. Um, yeah, so let's start on dictionary comprehension is a good example of a Python one liner because it allows you to do this. I mean, if you would write this in multiple lines in Python, then it would take you four or five lines or so just to, uh, just to basically write this. You need to have a for loop and then you need to have a dictionary which you initialize once and then you add, you add some values, you fill in some values. So this would be like more complicated to accomplish and this very short and concise Python one liner does it for you in the same. So many people tell me Python one liners are not pyth pythonic, but this is not true. Python one liners are very pythonic. This this way of creating dictionaries, uh, it's it's the most pythonic way of uh, of doing it. Yeah. So telling me this is not pythonic is basically it's wrong. Okay. So let's let's print the dictionary. Uh, capitalized. Uh, okay. I have used the wrong function. So. Okay, so I need to use the function capitalize. Okay, this works, but I still refresh the shell to get rid of this error. Okay, now you see uh, we have apple map to apple capitalized, mango map to mango capitalized, and so on. So this works. Example three works. Let's go into example four. We still use the fruits example because it's just uh, very useful. Now we use the enumerate function uh, on a list to create some tuples into that. Mapp mapping from integer to the value x for the p position i. Um, so we have like the fruits, this fruits uh, list and apple is associated to the integer, to the index 0. Mango is associated to the index 1. Banana is associated to the index 2. Cherry is in associated to the index 4. So this is what we want to accomplish. So we want to map the fruit to the index of this fruit. Uh, how do we do this in the, in the dictionary comprehension statement? Very simple. We use this again the expression part. Expression consists we map the variable name f which is the fruit name, the string name to the 
uh, variable name i, which will be the integer. Now we simply need to define the context. How do we do this? We use the enumerate function in our context part. So very concise statement that solves this problem. You see, uh, so we map the fruit to the integer. Now we need to define f and i. Uh, here we use this reverse. Um, basically, we, we use the enumerate function. So we iterate over all um, values returned by the enumerate function. Enumerate function um, gives us an iterable of tuples, where the first tuple value is the index of the of a, of, a, of the element we pass into the enumerate function and the second one is the element itself so we have the iterable here fruits we go over all fruits we take the fruit element and its index its index will be the first tuple value and the element itself will be the second tuple value and we generate number of tuple values as many tuple values as we have in the iterable passed into the enumerate function and then we print the result to the to the to the shell after like storing these uh, mappings and let's see the output so we have now apple mapped to zero, mango mapped to one and so on. Okay, so we have apple is our first element, so it mapped it is mapped to zero, mango is the second element, so it mapped so it is mapped to one and so on. So this also works beautifully, it's a very concise uh, dictionary comprehension statement. And let's quickly get rid of my face here. Um, considering example five. In our example five, our goal is just to reverse the key value mapping of a given dictionary. Okay, so say we have a um, we have any dictionary, let's call it D. This is a dictionary from example one. So we map a string value to its integer value and uh, do this like, like we can print this dictionary and look at it quickly. So we see this is our dictionary. So we have uh, mappings from key, from string keys to integer values. And now we simply want to re revert this mapping using dic dictionary comprehension. How can we do this? So I call the new dictionary DR. Again, we use the dictionary comprehension statement. Uh, now we map from i to the string to the string i for i in range five. So the context stays the same. Only the mapping, the order of the mapping changes. Yeah, we simply want to flip the order of the mapping. So we simply use this one uh, and flip it. And if we if we don't want to, if you want to use a, an existing dictionary to do this, we need to iterate over um, basically. We need to iterate over an existing dictionaries, uh, existing dictionary, over the items of an existing dictionaries, and we can do this for a key value in D items. Okay, so we have D. D is our a dictionary which we have already created. D, and we want and we use the items function to give us an iterable of key value mappings of key value pairs basically. And this is our this is now caught in the two variables k and v using this tuple notation. So we iterate for over all key value pairs in our um, items, dictionary items function. And now we don't want to map key to value because then we would have the same dictionaries. We want to map the value to the key. Okay, so we simply reverse the order. And now if we uh, print the result, we would we will see that it it that the return value or the result is sorry so uh, that the result is uh, directly inverted yeah so we have like now we don't have a mapping from strings to integers but from integers to strings so it reverts uh, the mapping order of a given dictionary okay so that's it if you like the uh, if you like these videos this more uh, pythonic videos and uh, give me um, give me a comment and uh, if you have any questions then feel free to ask. Thanks for watching this video uh, and yeah, check out my, my uh, Python email list if you are not already on it where I give a lot of uh, these tutorial like uh, tutorial videos and tutorial contact content that will improve your Python skills over time. So check it, check it out. I will give links to all these resources uh, in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.